right. You ready to come out to do the weights? Don't close this door, Gavin. Right, brother. This is the jump. This is my wee jump. This is a five foot straight bar. There's two five kg plates either side. The bar is um, 27 kilo. And I have worked out this exercise that really burns stress out and it makes you feel so strong, but you feel better for doing it. Just now, what I'm going to do to explain it to you, I'm going to use this bar behind my neck and then in front of my face is known as Maldrick Press. 15 behind, 15 in front, there's a total of 30. So it's 30 reps I'm going to do. And it's a tough, tough one. But something I really enjoy. Okay, Kevin. We'll get the work now. We'll get the work. Oh. Hey, Connor, could you tell me what is Asperger's? Or, or do you have, is it just, it's just the same as autism? It's a high functioning form of autism. Uh, some might say it's a mild form of autism. Although personally speaking, I think there's nothing mild about it. Uh, I don't know, really the context of what I would like to say is that I've been fortunately given this very nice apartment on Abercorn Road. And although I'm able to go out during the day and do my shopping and have a coffee or sit in a, sit in a summer bench, I'm in here every single night on my own taking medication and that's the price that I have to pay for having Asperger's Syndrome and mental health as well. How does it, how does it affect you from when you get up in the morning? Well. I'd be very drowsy from the medication from the night before. I've never been able to hold down a job because of sensory issues. I've never, truthfully, I've never had a social life because of sensory issues and anxiety going into nightclubs and pubs. Although I'm a well-known character about town, I'm never to be seen after really eight o'clock at night i'm home i'm getting ready to take my medication and and there's, there's no social life that that's the big part of asperger's because of anxiety issues and the sensory issues uh, you can't um you can't really have a social life having this condition and you're missing out meeting girls meeting women you know you're on your own and and um, I'm used to it, but at times it still brings me down, it still gets to me. What's the main symptoms? Well, as I say, when I was a young man, I had major issues in life, partly because I was drinking alcohol at the time and had terrible bouts of aggression, and I couldn't relate to other people, that's really what it's about. Although I'm sociable, I find it hard to sort of adapt to social situations. I couldn't work when I was on the housing executive many, many years ago. I found the environment that I was in, I couldn't deal, I couldn't deal with the environment that I was in. What does that mean? Well, it's very hard to explain. I've got mental health notes that could paper the inside of the guild hall, outside the guild hall and inside the guild hall. But um, when I was a young man, I found artificial lights in the building. I felt really fatigued from the artificial lights. Um, I just, I, 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 had those, I couldn't take any satisfaction in the job I was doing. I had a lot of energy. I felt I was trapped. I, I, bad coordination because of dyspraxia. I couldn't do a trade because of my coordination, even though I'm good at weightlifting, a very bad coordination. Um, I've done a lot of walking in life at one time as well. I've been well known by a lot of people in Derry for walking enormous lengths, 
like 30 miles many a day or the best part of 30 many a day. I've been unemployed since my early 20s. I ended up developing a psychosis when I was 35. Okay, what's that entail? Well, basically you become, um, in a very rudimentary terms, you break from reality, you start to believe things that are not true, you dream up conspiracy theories and it's, it's not a good place to be. Um, if anything, I proved that I really needed medication. What conspiracy theories like? Well, uh, you know, it's hard to explain. You know, you, you sort of believe you're being watched when you're not being watched and stuff like that there. And you think you're responsible for things that are not nothing to do with you. But just going for a long period? Quite a bit of time. Uh, quite a bit of time. And you were unmedicated at this time? Well, I was coming off medication mm. after nine and a half years. I, I was on a thing for nine. I was, I was on, <laughs> I was on their gacto for nine and a half years, and it was a great drug. But the thing was, it left me incredibly sedated with all the walking. But then, as the as the day wore on, all I wanted to do was train out in the roads, and it was like a vicious cycle. And I went on for nine and a half years. And to be honest with you, my poor father was tortured listening to me and my man didn't deserve it. It was, it was not right. But as he would say all these years later, Connor liked being on their gag though, but hated being on their gag though. Because I liked the thought, these strange paranoid thoughts. I liked, they were quelled, they were su suppressed. But the tiredness was horrendous at times. He, my daddy told the mental health staff, it's like this man's on um, a bottle of foggy every night. He's so tired the next day. Like Yackel did that? Yeah, it's called a liquid cost. It was used in the 1970s in prisons over in England. It was known as a liquid cost because it knocked you out completely. But that stops the intrusive thinking? Oh, it stopped the paranoid thinking, yes. The, the, the strange distress of thoughts that I was getting. Mm. They were sort of connected to living in Derry and things like that. What's all this going on? How long were you left on medication? What age were you, did they decide you needed medication? I was... Uh, what age are you now? I'm, I'm actually 45 past uh, February the 3rd last month. What age did, did you... I was 23, sir. I was 23 when I was put on it. And I stopped drinking, I think. If I get this right now, I stopped drinking on February the 3rd, 2001. I was 23. And that following September, uh, I was put on antipsychotics. And I've never been off them since. And in the last 10 years, because of the psychotic breakdown I had, they put me in lithium, which I've been taking for 10 years, on top of the antipsychotic medication. What's your, your friends and family circle, how do they help you? Well, I'm a very good neighbour living in this block of flats in Abercorn Road, a very good friend, Liam Murray, a really good person. And we pal about together. My father's old now. Daddy was very good to me. I can never question how good he was to me. But the man's worn out. You know, even the mental health staff would know that. He's just totally worn out. A lot, a lot down to me, to be fair. What do you see the, the main challenges that you face every day? Well, I mean... It's, you know, it's, it's sort of hard to explain because, um, you know, as I, as I say, because of the, the condition of Asperger's and then um, dyspraxia is how it all began. That's a coordination problem. And then in later years, I was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. So it's a, it's, it's a whole connection of things. But I struggle maintaining my independence in this flat. I'm not very good at cooking. I'm, I, I could do basic chores and stuff like that. But 
as, as I said earlier in our interview, Gavin, I would say that not having a social life at any stage in life, not going out, you know, bar a handful of times at 17, and any time I went out, it was a disaster. And I, I mean, my right hand's badly scarred. There's, I think, was it well over 20 stitches in my right hand through silliness, through drink, breaking windows, punching windows, and stuff like that. And I'm lucky to be alive, if the truth be told. Right, my friend. These are two dumbbells. This, each dumbbell is 25 kilo, and that's 50 kilo, a total of two dumbbells. 50 kilo in old money is eight stone. And the exercise I'm going to do now is known as dumbbell shoulder presses. What are your hopes for the future? One day at a time, Gavin. I don't really have any hopes for the future. I'm worried about my father passing away. I love him. Don't always get on with him, but I really we have a good we've we have a good relationship by and by and large. You know, if the truth be told, there was a lot of arguing between the pair of us, not from me towards him in regards to how irritable I felt in the mornings coming around from their gag though when he sat in that chair and I regret that I regret instead of us having a nice time father son it ended up me bitching basically about how ill I felt taking their gag though I regret that bitterly we should have went out for coffees and teas and you know, maybe walks and stuff. He was very good to me, my father. I was lucky to have. I was very lucky to have him as a father. But Noah McKenna, the ex mayor. Ex mayor of Derry. Yes, ex mayor of Derry. Noah McKenna. He was very, very good father. I can genuinely say that. I do mean that. Is he still involved in your life? He's still alive, Gavin. He's still alive. He's very old and. He's worn out. He's a lot of health problems. He took a lot of stress from me, and it's something I deeply regret. Right, have you any? Have you any other regrets? I regret drinking. <laughs> uh, but I think that was all part and parcel of Asperger's, and then the medication sort of was a good fuck that sort of calmed me down and relaxed me and helped me to go to sleep and stuff. But it wasn't a panacea. It helped, but it wasn't a panacea. It wasn't a cure-all. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <sighs> oh, that was dirty too. How going? <laughs> oh, I enjoy it, Gavin. I enjoy it. Oh. <laughs> you don't do that in any gym. It's too hard. <laughs> you were saying there that obsession would be a, p a part of your Asperger's. Can well, you tell me about that? it's sometimes known as an obsession, or it's also known as a special interest. And I kept diaries of all the training that I used to do, walking the roads of Derry, and I trained obsessively there's no question about it and I walked um, I walked 20,000 miles genuinely hand in the heart in six years and I kept meticulous diaries to prove and I even gave statistics to justify what I'd done my whole life revolved around eating sleeping walking and writing about walking and I went on for six years and then maybe it's no wonder that I took a psychotic breakdown which led me to go to Greenswood for 10 weeks. Did you meticulously document it each time? Yes, each yes. I, I wrote it out three times. It was, it was three, it was a 
a bullet point draft of it could be a five hour walk and many a walk was five hours it could be a bullet point draft then uh, a first draft in rough paper and then a final draft in the manuscript book and that's and each line each my every 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 road every street name was recorded of the walks that i'd done including people you met no funny enough it was more a journal about the walk in itself it wasn't really about uh it was specifically about the route that i, I walked and many a day i was walking up to five hours and beyond the times they were happy times but it ended badly I even mean, i ended up almost i could have died as a result of it all Hi. through suicide It was a very intense period of my life, and I took a psychosis, and as I, was, I think the walking subdued the symptoms of psychosis and the medication helped, and all that hard training. And then once I just couldn't take any more, I was told by a psychiatrist, a fellow, to, a doctor, told me that uh, I was destined to take the psychosis. It was on my genes. I think I took two psychoses, once when I was 20 and once when I was 35. And this walking quelled that? Yes. How did you come through that, su that suicidal thinking phase? Quite simply, they put me in nothing, I'm a grandchild, and I ended up turning around from these thoughts of suicide. And you feel you've come out of that? Again, it's not a panacea, but it does help. I still get bad days. Really, I do. I don't think I get any manic days because I'm on nothing, but I still get days where I feel pretty bad about myself. What advice would you give someone who's young now who's just been diagnosed with, with Asperger's autism? I don't know. I, feel, uh, I wouldn't want anyone to go through my journey. I really wouldn't. I just, uh, I've probably have been lucky in a lot of ways, in fairness. I've probably have been very lucky. Probably been very lucky, but um, it's been a hard journey. It really has. Oh, that's a wrap.